I am super excited to have Lauren Bruckner on the podcast this week sharing all about her book, The Mindful Magician. This book is just gorgeous and I know you are going to love it. If you love Lauren's other books, lots of you know The Kid's Guide to Being Awesome, The Keeping Calm Guru, How to Be a Superhero or Self-Control to the Rescue, which are for all different ages and stages and teaching children to recognize and regulate emotions. Um, And I love all those books because she's an OT And she really does include all the different things children can use to regulate and de-escalate their behaviors. Now, what she has done, sorry, de-escalate their feelings or emotions, how they're feeling. um, And often that looks like behavior, obviously. But in the new book, I love it. It's a picture book. So it's using a lot of the things that she talks about in her books. But actually, the children go to Feelings Town and they become a magician who learn to be the boss of their own emotions by zapping away their feelings. So after recording this podcast with Lauren, um, I got all excited and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make this a fun thing for the whole, all my listeners. So make sure you jump on the blog or podcast um, episode online if you're listening to this later. But if you do subscribe to my email list, you should have got an email this week with a whole lot of fun um activities for the kids and templates so that you all the children can make a wand and they can make their own stop sign. So you'll hear Lauren talk about making their own stop sign in this. Now, a couple of things. I have a problem with the word stop because the word stop doesn't tell a child what to do, but they are going to learn what to do in this book. But I highly recommend if the children can write on the stop sign They write down what personally helps them stop. So instead of being a stop sign, Lauren's saying it can be a love heart or a butterfly so or a star or children can draw their own. But I'm giving you some templates of um, things that and even just some ideas so you can show the children what their stop sign could be. So they could just color that in or you could get the children to write the words on there. So up to you. But what I'm sending to is also a picture of um, the magician who takes the children around Feelings Town. And I'm thinking maybe you could copy the um, the objects, what, you know, the outlines onto different colors and then put it as a display like a rainbow because in the Feelings Town, in the book, they – it's like a rainbow the way it's put out. So maybe you have a whole lot of purple, then orange, then yellow to make your display look more colorful if you're just going to have children write words in their stop sign. Um, and I think that would just be the most beautiful display. And this is making children understand their emotions and what to do. But remember, feelings can come up for different reasons. So Lauren goes through each of the different feelings, like some children need movement, some sights and sounds, some have strong feelings, some are wiggly, some it's inside body like toilet drink food. So Lauren goes through all of those in this interview. But then I would love you to make the display, get children to make their own magic wand. um, And maybe um, you can have the display in your classroom and they have to go and tap the wand and say what they're going to do. Oh, you could just make this so much fun. I just think this could be awesome. Or you might just laminate that and they keep it in their pocket. Or you might laminate it and it's on their desk, their stop sign. Or it might be in their pencil case, you know up to you. You can make, maybe you can photocopy them and use them in different spots. I don't know. I just think you are going to have so much fun making your mindful magician and the children having a wand and what their stop sign. So the activities I'm sending are for the children to create the wand and the stop signs up to you. But if the children can write words, I'd encourage you to put those on there and really helping children um, understand their emotions. This is the best book, The Mindfulness Magician. It's on my website. If you haven't grabbed a copy, make sure you do. It, it. I actually recorded this podcast interview a while ago with Lauren, but it's been so hard to get stock in Australia. 
Um, and I have just literally bought every copy I can find from our supplier because I just love this book and I know you're going to too. So have fun helping children to zap away their emotions and being the boss of their feelings and have fun making a class display or at home, maybe you can make a family display and I think families, you'll love this book too. Hi everyone, welcome to the Sue Larky podcast. As I always say, you have to embrace difference to make a difference. Let's dive into today's podcast. Welcome everybody. I am so excited to have Lauren Bruckner on the podcast. She's an occupational therapist and author of one of my favorite books, The Kid's Guide to Being Awesome, which she has come on the podcast to talk about before. So super excited to have you back on. So welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. It's super exciting. Now, for people who don't know you, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, So I'm a treating pediatric occupational therapist. I am an evaluator for the New York City Department of Education. I also treat kids in elementary school twice a week. And while I've been treating, I've developed the awesome and in control curriculum um, as I saw the need for it in the pediatric population to work on self-regulation, like around language, around self-regulation and connected strategies. From there, I also developed a handwriting program as I saw the need for kids to be able to work on underlying skills connected to handwriting, right, like throughout the day, Um, and as well as a curriculum for teachers to implement throughout the day as well. Like, so not hands-on for kids to work on, but like for the teachers to influence um, around underlying skills connected to self-regulation, like reading, writing, transitions as well. So this, my seventh book actually came out in April. So that's really exciting. (laughs) So exciting. And we're going to talk about that. But I realized when we were emailing back and forth that I hadn't had you on to talk about the getting your words on paper, even though I have, I did do a podcast when it came out and told everyone about it. Uh How exciting. Because Um, it's fabulous having an occupational therapist because as teachers, we don't learn how to help children get their words on paper. And there's so many great activities in there to help children, you know, with their fine, because it's not just about fine motor skills. It's about the scanning and there's so many skills to get words on paper. Exactly. And I feel like that's actually like as an evaluator and even like as a treating therapist, like that's one of our number one referrals for uh, kids in the school system is handwriting, especially like as we were in the pandemic, right? Like kids were typing a lot and like there wasn't the pencil to paper. So we were getting like handwriting, 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 but like really there's the underlying skills that are connected to handwriting. So within that book, like we actually ask the kid, we ask the child, what is the block? Like what is the hardest around the handwriting? So we're actually at putting the child in the front seat what is the most difficult? So whether it's visual motor, whether it's gross motor, whether it's attention or sensory, right? So based on their answers, you develop a program that you implement before they sit down to write and you embed that every single day. So it kind of like decreases the need for me, which is what I want. (laughs) I love that. And that's what I want. And, you know, teachers have 30 children in the class. They don't want to have to be there all the time either. So it's exactly. that proactive, not reactive. And I couldn't agree more. So many kids on devices. But I also think iPads because yes. children on an iPad get a response from just one finger on a pe- on a device and it's mm-hmm. there's not a lot of tracking skills is what I'm finding. So I'm not an OT or anything. I'm just a teacher that goes, well, wow. because the child is just getting a response straight under their finger and they're not always mm-hmm. having to do that tracking, I'm seeing yeah. a lot of children who are really struggling with scanning then when it comes to reading too. Like it's it's all connected, isn't it? Yes, like they're losing those fundamental skills that are really important, even like with the kinesthetic, like the kinesthetic component, right? Like you need to touch things, you need to experience things like we need to, they need to use the ocular motor components, they need to use a hands on component. And when they're losing that, right, because 
like, honestly, they're getting that automatic feedback. They're getting like the electronic, like it's more fun sometimes, right? Or they're thinking like, okay, and it's so fast paced, they're losing those underlying skills. So we need to bring it back. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, absolutely. Well, I'll I'll make sure I reconnect to the getting the words on paper. And I put, I think when I put it up last time, I put some of the pages as examples. So I'll make sure I do that because I think teachers want time savers, and that's what you yeah. provide in all your books. And that's why I love the Kids Guide to Being Awesome too, because it's like just pick it up and do this as a brain break with the whole class. Yeah. Or, and um, and of course, anyone with younger kids, there's the calming guru for older kids too with yeah. emotional regulation, and they love that. I think that sort of more mature approach to self-regulation yeah. is so important. But you've got a new book out, which I'm very, very excited about, <laughs> The Mindfulness Magician, and it's a bit different because it's like a picture yes. book. Yes, it was really, really exciting for me. I've always wanted to write like a full color picture book that was more like a read aloud. I've had like friends and colleagues ask me like, when are you writing like a read aloud picture book? And it was always a goal of mine. So this was really exciting for me to so get into good. the world. Uh-huh. Oh, so because so people are listening on a podcast, just tell them what they're going to see in this magical world because the illustrations are beautiful. But um, hey, let us let us tell it. Take us on a bit of an imaginary journey of what they're going to see in there. Sure. So we have the Mindful Magician and the Mindful Magician takes the reader on this trip around Feelingstown and Feelingstown has different stops that target different feeling, so to speak. So we have, I, I can like show, you could tell me if you can see, uh, it's a yeah. blurry and yeah, I don't know how right. to adjust that. Okay. So for example, like the first stop is strong feeling street. So a court, so we're basically according to like, if you think back to like how to be a superhero called self-control, we have characters who are in, in need. They're experiencing different like sensory and emotional regulation difficulties. So if we do the strategy the correct way, we save the day for that character. So this is similar, but it's a little more simplified. We have one magical power that we do. And then if we do the magical power the right way, we save the day for the character in need. So for example, Strong Feeling Street, we have Andy who's playing outside with her friends. She's playing hopscotch. She doesn't wanna come inside. Her mom is telling her it's time to come in for dinner. She's getting really, really, really angry. So what is the first magical superpower we learn? We learn it's stop sign and it's really broken down in how to do stop sign. So we are, we like kind of do stop sign with Andy. We do it the right way. And then Andy is inside eating dinner with her family and she's feeling just right. Right? So, right. And then we just go to different stops along the way. We go to Sights and Sound Station where everything is so busy. There's like a lot going on. There's like loud noises. There's a lot of visuals in the environment. And we just go to a strategy around that. So along the way, there's like wiggly way, movement mountain, like interception area, right? Which is um, inside body feeling zoo. So it's just targeting different areas where kids feel like, Um, strong feelings that the reader can relate to. They do a strategy, which is a magical superpower. They learn, oh, I can connect to this and they can integrate it into their daily life. I love it. I love it. And kids love it when you make learning fun and, you know, using that metaphor and analogies and saying it's a magic or a superpower. I just think, you know, it's a bit like the kids Uh guys being awesome. It it's just so proactive and positive instead of, you know, yeah, like if we, I always find with kids, if I can be like, okay, what superpower do we need to use now? I can see that, you know, then they're taking control of their own emotions. And I I mean, I think I might've mentioned last time, I call it emotional literacy. We need to give children the literacy and the language to understand their feelings. So what the picture book's doing is sort of bringing all of that literacy together in a way that they can be like, well, I, I need to stop this and go inside or stop an activity. What magical power do I need to use in this moment? You know? Exactly. And I feel like I've kind of been like exploring this with students I work with and classrooms and kids really love the idea of magic, right? 
one part is like every kid has magic inside them. And I've had kids say, of course we do. Right. I love that. Because, right. It's true. Kids are magic. They have magic. And we can kind of take that. And then we like, I like to embed the idea that they have power and control. And that is like a theme of all my books. And if we can like give the child choice in taking this superpower, taking this magical power and give them the idea of control and autonomy in how they're embedding that in the, in this superpower, in the magical power, then they're able to self-regulate effectively. I love it. Right. So it's not just like do the strategy, right? Like in certain ones, it's like, okay, like what color is your stop sign? What does it look like? So they have the choice, they have the control and they love creating their own stop signs, right? It's sparkly, it's a hexagon, it's, you know, it's made out of diamonds, right? So we're giving them choice, right? Yeah. And and that's amazing. I loved going into a classroom and they were showing me like all these different, all these different stop signs. I love it. So cute. And they put it on a wall, right? So there was the stop sign wall. So as soon as a child felt like really frustrated, really dysregulated, the teacher was pointing to the wall, "Mm, stop sign. Yeah, I love it. Right. I love Uh it. And and also making those activities where it then becomes a conversation, like a, you know, a class conversation, and they can all talk to each other about their stop signs. And so then they've got that Mm -hmm. neutral understanding. And if they need to you know, some of my girls on the spectrum particularly co-regulate with their friends. So what you're doing is like giving them the language and so really to say to their friends, what's your stop sign? And we're all talking about that. And then in that moment, they can support their neurodiverse peers because they've got that same language. I love that. Like, that's why I love doing this. Like everybody's doing the same thing. There's not one child pulled out having their own stop sign. The teacher has their stop sign. Every child has their stop sign. If you're doing this at home, like mom has a stop sign, right? The brother has a stop sign. The sister has a stop, whoever, right? Like everybody's on the same page. And if like, even if, right, like the child is watching mom, for example, like being really frustrated and they're saying, "Mm, stop sign. I sh- right, they're modeling the use of the stop sign. So it's not the child feeling like only they have it. Exactly. And I think this is what's so important that we need children to know we have big emotions as adults too. I think, yes. you know, it's so important. And, you know, I, I even know I, my oldest daughter's just started work and she's going through the, you know, that uh, illusion of work, thinking work is going to be this wonderful place, you know. And I'm like, my husband, and I've been reflecting. Maybe we didn't tell her enough how hard work can be. <laughs> you know that it, it can be tricky, and and we need right. children, no matter what age. You know, she's a young mm-hmm. adult, and we're still teaching her that like it's okay to get upset at work, like because she's never worked. Am I allowed to cry at work? Is that okay? You know, right. right. <laughs> And I think every adult has. So, yeah. oh, for sure. Yeah. But don't you think we should all be sharing our emotions and telling? Because yes. otherwise, so many of our children think emotions are wrong, that they should be happy all the time, like a Disney movie. You know, that's right. That's not right. right. You know, exactly. And that's like another part of this book is explaining like, big feelings are totally okay. Right. And here's things that we can do to help us manage them when they get too big and then we can't move past them. Right. But everybody has them. Yeah. And I think that's what's so important because some of my children will catastrophize and think they're the only person in the classroom that's feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love your books because I like to do it as a whole class and like, Hey, we're all going to get up and have a break. And what sort of break do you need? What do I need? You know? And, and everyone talking, like, sometimes I am tired. Sometimes I need different things. And um, I think that's what's so powerful, getting us all really more conscious of our feelings mm-hmm. and emotions. But also we can fix them up, you know. We can feel good again. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. And yeah. Um, so who illustrated the book? Oh, my gosh. She is so amazing, Jennifer Jameson, like, I, I have to say kids look through this book and they are regulated by looking at the pictures, honestly. <laughs> I felt the same. I'm such a visual person. I just yeah. thought the illustrations were beautiful and, right. and, and interesting. Like there were so many different, like not always Wally, but there were different things to look yes. at. And yeah, 
you can spend hours on a page, like looking at all the little details and like the little bunnies that have like the little helpers and like they're silly and cute and adorable. Like just the little details are so fun. I feel like I have to spend more time looking at all the details. Like I could have a therapy session with students, like just dissecting the pictures and like they're so gorgeous. And if I have a sequel, I definitely want to work with her because she's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. She's really brought your words to life. And oh, I think, yes. yeah, yeah. But I just yeah. think I just, because if you think about, you know, we all feel different feelings and emotions for different reasons. And I just think the pages and the colors have really captured that and just made it so mm-hmm. engaging. So, oh, good. So what would you do in the sequel? I have to know now. Uh, you know what? It's so funny because I woke up this morning, like really early and I was thinking, I don't know where I was thinking about our talk and I was like, would I write another book with about this? And it's, it's like, you know what? I wonder what it would be like if the mindful magician went to school. <laughs> <laughs> right? And like, yeah. what would Feelings Town look like if it was just like school in Feelings Town? And I think that would actually be a really cute sequel. So, you know, once I kind of get back into my groove, if I started and if I did my eighth book, I wonder if that is. I love it. Be, right? I, I think that would so, be amazing because, right? again, you know, for many um, children that I work with, you know, mainly on the spectrum, that mm-hmm. often they don't realize other people are having the same emotions and challenges and sometimes a book saying well so-and-so feels this way and -and Mm so-and-so feels you know because I always say one activity we can all feel different emotions in the same activity um this this week I was talking at a conference and I got them to write down by nine o'clock every emotion they'd felt and how right. this is oh, like, what, what, from when you woke up this morning to now what are the emotions you felt and how did you fix up those emotions like if there was a like just as adults right because I was trying to get them to understand that we we all have emotions of now course. some people woke up excited about the conference others woke up anxious same activity different feeling right and then right. some people regulated with a coffee of course well, I mean <laughs> I can relate to that <laughs> But my my point is that sometimes we expect every child in the class to feel the same way about the same activity. And that's that's just not going to happen, you know? know. Everyone's going to a conference, everyone doesn't feel the same. You're doing a music activity, some children love it, some hate it, you know, especially my sound sensitive Mm -hmm. children. They're not too happy about that. So, So I love the idea of the magician going to school because I can mm-hmm. can see like getting the children to think about uh, you've got me too excited. Uh, this isn't meant to be about me. Right? Sorry. <laughs> no, but I actually really love that idea, right? Because I think sometimes we like expect even more of our kids in general, right? Yeah. It's like we can be dysregulated, we can be frustrated and mad, but I think it's like Sometimes we just expect like our kids, of course, they're going to be okay. Of course, they're going to sit and listen to our lessons and our therapy sessions and they're going to come home from school totally okay. And I think, and that's, you know, like we have our agenda with them and that's normal because, you know, we have a lot on our plates as adults, but I think it is important to stop and think, okay, wait, they're kids. Exactly. Exactly. And I I always say, like when I talk at conferences, you know, I use, I always have your awesome book there and I always do brain breaks and I always say, notice yourself as a learner today there are times that you will be turned off switching off or what do you do to regulate that's why we have to teach the children because many of our children don't know how to get back to that that spot so yeah and now we can add the magician and we can say well what would the magician do yeah I love it I love it yeah and then the magician's Mm going to go to school now now you've told all my audience I'm telling you I have to pitch this to my to my uh, publisher. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I love that. Um, so I'm just trying to think. We've sort of told a lot about the book. I think it's great. Oh, what age group are you imagining it being used with? Um, I really think pre-K and up, and that's where I've tested it out, and that's where um, I've really found it effective so far and where I've heard feedback. And honestly, like I actually just spoke to a teacher who gave me the feedback that she's been using these strategies herself and it's been helpful. So <laughs> I, I love don't that. to say just for kids. Um, I feel like it's just starting with pre-K. You know? So what's pre-K? What age is that? Oh, oh, okay. Like four. Four. Four and up. Yeah. I thought that. I thought four and up when I read it, but I'm I, I never sort of, you know, I always like to check with the author what they were thinking. But I think four-year-olds and up could actually 
use the strategies and the language to that mm-hmm. that it was pitched at. I really like that. That's so gorgeous. Well, congratulations. What'd you say? Book Thank number you. eight. Book number eight, is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's so exciting. I'm getting excited now. <laughs> it's so exciting. Well, thank you so much for coming on and also for um, sharing a little bit about getting your words on paper. I highly recommend that um, everybody have a look at both of those books and I'm pretty sure most people should have all your other ones, but I'll make sure I link to all of them in the, the blog. Um, oh, is there any downloadable activities in the, the new book? Oh, yeah. I'm actually very excited about it. I wound up actually, so there's, because I wanted this book to be like really simple for kids to like integrate one strategy per area of difficulty, um, I only did one. But if you go to the download section on JKP or Hashtag UK, um, you will get added areas. Like if you want to work on like, besides like stop sign for a strong feeling street, for example, there will be another few strategies. Like if you want more information, there's a whole list and like added ways for you in, for you to integrate the strategies into daily life. So there's like added area, like added strategies per area. So there's a bunch of added contents. Oh, great. Well, I'll make sure I link to that and maybe put one yeah. of the, an example because um, that's the great thing with books now. Yeah. We can just have a link that takes us to other really good content and ideas. Fantastic. Yeah. So what's your stop sign? What's yours? You know what? For next, so my favorite colors are pink and green, and I like I love the idea of a heart. Just I just think that's peaceful and beautiful, and it's just pink and green. I love, love. it. A heart. Yeah. I think that is so gorgeous. Well, my word yeah. for last year was joy, and I think okay. I think a joyful heart would have to have been mine last year. You know, and do you have any colors? Or I'm a blue and I'm a blue and red girl. And okay. I've I've always been navy and red. I don't know. So yeah, okay. that, that deep deep blue. Yeah, I would definitely do it in that. And I I still do my diary and color texters every week because it makes me happy. Me? <laughs> yeah, it's just about knowing your strategies and what works, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm a post-it note and color texter girl still. <laughs> It's just knowing yourself and what works for you. That that's just what it is. And I don't think kids like to see that. I really do. Yes. You know? Yeah. They do. They do. And I will name it for the kids I work with and be like, okay, like for me, mantras are really helpful. Saying like, I can do it, no big deal. Showing them a stop sign and having like modeling it. I, I just feel like it's effective. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, yeah. thank you, and go. I love your love heart, your pink and green love heart. Of uh, uh, I think that'll inspire lots of people today to go and have a think what their stop sign is. In fact, I might yeah. when the podcast goes live, ask people in my uh, Facebook podcast group what their yeah. stop, stop sign is. That'd be a really fun question. I'm curious to see what they what you guys all decide. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I know it's very early in the morning there. So go and get some more coffee. <laughs> and it's late by you. So you yeah, go to- it's great. <laughs> well, I'm so glad we were able to connect. I really, really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. I hope you've got some great tips and strategies to make a difference. Remember, strategies wear out and not every strategy works for everybody. If you're ready to dive in deeper to more strategies and ideas to make a difference, I'd highly recommend you consider Dr. Tony Atwood or my online courses. For more information, visit my website, www.sulaki.com.au.